Hello everybody, Zach Couples, physical therapist here. And folks, if you've done any breathing-based exercises, I'm sure you've thought about utilizing the inhalation to try to loosen up your upper body, your neck, and all that stuff. In fact, you might be someone who thinks, oh man, you know, my upper back's a little tight, so I probably gotta get in position and really force air in there. Or if like, oh, I gotta get my chest to loosen up, I'm gonna just take this huge breath of air in, right? Is that you? Well, folks, I got news for you. That don't work. Yes, folks, big forceful inhales and trying to push air into specific areas of your rib cage, it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work at increasing your available range of motion has to do with the principles of physics. So what we're gonna go into in today's video is I'm gonna show you, based on physics, why big forced inhales into specific areas is ineffective at increasing your range of motion and what you can do instead. Dust off your physics textbooks, folks, because that's how we're going to explain why the forceful inhale doesn't work. And in order to understand why the forceful inhale doesn't work, we have to look at one of my favorite equations of all time, Poiseuille's equation. And it looks like this. Now I know what you're thinking, you're like, ooh, that's scary. But don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you Degeneration X style. The F is equal to flow. The R to the fourth power is equal to the radius of some type of tube of some sort. The triangle P is the change in pressure. The weird looking N thing, that is the viscosity. And the L is the length. And so basically, if there is more pressure within a system or a larger radius, the flow of fluids will increase. And if there's a lower pressure or a smaller radius, the flow of fluids will decrease. I will give you a very practical example of this in the real world that I'm sure you've done. Suppose that it's summertime. You're playing the Will Smith song and you're watering your flowers with your homies. And you're kind of doing it, watering, minding your own business. And you're thinking about Poussel's equation. And you're like, huh, I noticed that my hose is shooting out water at a certain rate. And that's because the circular portion of the hose, which half of that's the radius, is of a certain size. And there's a certain amount of water pressure that's being released to allow the water to flow out the hose. But then you get a bright idea. You know where I'm going with this, folks. You take your thumb and you put it over part of the hose so you can squirt your friends. We've all done it. It's a key piece of summertime. But what happens? When you put your thumb over part of the hose, you effectively make the radius that the water's coming out of smaller. And so then what happens is pressure, water pressure has to shoot up faster to keep the same fluid rate. And you squirt all your friends, life is good, and we all get a good laugh. Except maybe your friends, maybe they're angry. Spoiler alert, fluids within our bodies work the exact same way. The easiest example of seeing Poiseuille's equation at work in our bodies is with blood pressure. So when your blood pressure raises up, your blood vessels constrict in order to keep the pressure high. And what this does is it makes the blood move faster to specific areas. But done over a long period of time, it can have negative implications on the health of our body because we don't get oxygen as well to specific tissues such as our brain. How does this relate to breathing? Well, I'm glad you asked. Poiseuille's equation relates to airflow as well. And I'll show you a very easy example of how if I have too much pressure, too much force of an inhale, that it will shrink the area that we're trying to breathe into. And the easiest example I can show is right here. So I'm gonna make a uh, fist and almost make like a straw with my hand. And I'm gonna do a quiet inhale, and I want you to look right here to look at the, set, the, the shape of my hand as I breathe in. Are you ready? So right there, I breathe in really softly. And you'll notice that the shape maintained. Watch what happens though, when I start to kick it up a notch, in real Lagasse style, and I breathe in a little bit harder. Ready? What did you notice? Well, when I increased the pressure of me pulling more air in, 
the circular the circumference the diameter of my hand in this specific area got smaller the same thing happens folks when we forcefully inhale through our nose or we try to push air into specific areas that increases the pressure within our system muscles kick into higher gear because if i track the muscles really hard that helps increase pressure and it allows me to get air to move into my body faster but as a consequence that muscle activity actually shrinks the available motion that we have within our bodies and it is that reason folks why breathing in forcefully through our nose and trying to force air into specific areas of our body does not work all right, Zach, if a forceful inhale doesn't work, what does? Well, I'm going to show you. In fact, there are four major keys that you need to have an effective inhale that's going to maximize your joint range of motion. And all four of these strategies encourage an environment that maximizes the radius or the size of our airway, and it keeps the pressure low so we can increase the air flow. First, you have to make sure that your tongue is up on the roof of your mouth and your lips are closed. What this does is when the tongue is up on the roof of your mouth, it pulls the roof down slightly. The roof of your mouth is also the floor of your nose. So that helps create an ideal pressure situation within your nose so it's easier to breathe that way. Now that we have that in place, the second step is to breathe in through your nose. Breathing in through your nose actually maintains the shape of the airway better than breathing in through your mouth. And this was actually demonstrated in those individuals who have sleep apnea. They had subjects in this particular study that I'll link. They had subjects um, breathe in through their nose compared to the mouth. And the pharyngeal airway, the airway in the back of the throat, got smaller in individuals who mouth breathed in comparison to those who use the nose. So we're gonna keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth with the lips closed. Step one, we're gonna breathe in through the nose. How are we gonna do it? I'm glad you asked. We're gonna do it quietly. So you don't wanna force it. You almost want the air to come in passively like this. Did you hear it? Exactly. A cue that I like to give my Supreme clientele so they can feel what this concept is, is I'll tell them pretend that Michael Myers from the Halloween movies is on the other side of the door and you don't want them to hear you. So you want to breathe in very quietly. And the last piece is we don't want to force it. We only want to inhale whatever our nose is going to give us at that point in time. You got to figure folks, if you are someone who has some restrictions in the rib cage, you might not get a bunch of air coming in. And that's okay. Because if you force it, we're going to have exactly what we talked about. You're going to have increased muscle activity. That's going to compress the rib cage and it's going to limit the degree that you can loosen up those areas. If I'm not forcing it and I'm just taking whatever my body's giving me, that's going to create an environment that increases space within the lung tissue. That's going to stretch out the rib cage. And it's going to get a lot of those tissues relaxed that might be toy like a toyga that are restricting your rib cage dynamics. Now, folks, what if you are someone who you've done all those things, but you deal with a lot of congestion, maybe you have a difficult time breathing through your nose? What do you do there? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna walk you through some different strategies that we can utilize to maximize our ability to breathe in through your nose with a caveat. And that caveat, folks, is it may be that you have something structural, maybe you have some allergies that you are dealing with. And it might be worthwhile if you're someone who's had difficulty breathing through your nose for a long period of time. And some of these conservative measures that I'm about to show you don't work. It's probably worthwhile getting checked out by an ENT just to make sure that there's nothing pathological that is limiting your ability to breathe through your nose. That said, there's a few different strategies you can use to maximize your ability to breathe in through your nose. If you want something very quick and dirty, you can do what's called the Coddles Maneuver. And basically, all you're gonna do with this is you're gonna take some fingers on either side of your nose, and you're gonna pull the skin laterally or out, outward like this. And a lot of times, just by doing that, that'll increase the amount of space that your nose has to breathe, and it can reduce some of the resistance. Now, the problem with that is it's not very long lasting. If you want something that lasts a little longer and you're not, you know, you're not going to walk around with your fingers on the sides of your nose all day, 
then you might want to try a few other different strategies. One could be simply doing a nasal clearing exercise to help increase the ability to breathe in through your nose. And it looks like this. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fingers, you're gonna just gently, not completely cover, but put it over your nostrils like so. You're gonna take a silent inhale through your nose and then you're just gonna exhale against that resistance just like this. I'll do another one. And so what that does, folks, is when you're exhaling against a little bit of resistance, it increases the pressure within your nose. When the pressure is increased in your nose, that signals to the turbinates, which are these things in your nose that can swell or get smaller, depending on if I'm trying to reduce the amount of airflow coming in, it'll signal to them based on your barrel receptors, which are pressure sensors, to actually get smaller. And a lot of times, if you do three to five of those rounds, it can make nasal breathing significantly easier. Another option that you can utilize are these little fancy things right here called boom boom sticks. Basically what these are is they are um, essential oils that you can go ahead and sniff very quickly. And it helps, love it. It helps open up the nostrils a bit just based on smelling those specific scents. Link in the description below if you wanna go ahead and get yourself some. And lastly, the other thing that I would encourage you to do is to keep your nose clean. Folks, not that type of nose clean, although you should keep that kind of nose clean. I'm talking about this kind of nose clean right here, folks. A nasal saline rinse. So basically what I do, and I do this a few times a day, is I fill this up with distilled water, put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, throw a saline packet within this, shake it up, shake it up, squirt your nose, and this is very effective at clearing your nose of anything that might be contributing to some congestion. Pro tip, make sure you do not forget the saline because if you just squirt water up your nose, it's gonna be super duper uncomfortable and you're gonna be more congested. Now, if you try those things and you're still running into some issues, it might be beneficial to utilize some type of nasal orthotic to help increase the dimensions of your nose so it's easier to breathe into your nose. Breathe Right Strips are an example of this. The one that I've utilized and that I've reviewed personally has been the Mute Nasal Dilator. I've been a pretty big fan of that. The one that I am recommending to my clients right now that I've found to be the best of both worlds of the Breathe Right Strip and the Mute Nasal Dilator is actually the Intake Breathing System. Basically what this is, and I'm saying this folks, they don't pay me to, to recommend them, but you get uh, the magnetic strip on your nose, you put this strip on there and it pulls it apart. So it kind of is a combination of a Breathe Right Strip and a Mute. Those are effective conservative measures that you can utilize on a regular basis to ensure that you can breathe through your nose effectively. There you have it folks. Those are the major keys when it comes to making sure your inhales are helping you increase your available range of motion. What struggles have you had with breathing based exercises? Have there been different tactics you've utilized to get a more effective inhale to keep things loosey-goosey? Why don't you go ahead and comment below and let the fam know. If you like this type of content and you want to learn more, please check me out at ZachCouples.com. And then while you're here watching the video, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button so we can keep the fam growing. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience, and I hope that you keep it real but not the extent when things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.